Hello, book check here. Um, I just wanted to do a currently reading uh, video, and um, once again, this is like my second video on YouTube, so please don't judge. I'm still figuring this out, um, but I've got lots of time on my hands now, so should figure it out soon. Um, so this is my currently reading. Uh, I don't read one book at a time. I read several, in this case five. Um, so the first book I want to mention is The Banana Cream Pie Murder by Joanne Fluke. This is a really great book series. I'm not reading them in order. A friend asked if I wanted to borrow any books and I saw this and I said sure. Um, I've read a couple of her other books. Again, not in any order. I think I read three. Then I tried to read one and didn't get to finish it because it was a library book. So I give it back, and now I'm reading this one. I think this is like 25 or something. But anyway, um, it is a murder mystery. Um, it's But it's set in uh, Minnesota. And the main character is a baker. And for whatever reason, like a lot of her baked goods usually wind up at the crime scene, even though she never has anything to do with the murder like she's never the killer or anything um it just works out that way because it's a small town and everyone likes her food um so i'm going to read the back of it really quick after an extravagant honeymoon hannah's eager to settle down in lake e eden and turn domestic daydreams into reality but when her mother's neighbor is discovered murdered in the condo downstairs reality becomes a nightmarish investigation victoria bascom once a renowned act stage actress was active in the theater, commu theater community during her brief appearance in town and made throngs of en enemies along the way. Did a random intruder murder the woman as police claim or was a deadlier scheme at play? As Hannah peels through countless suspects in some new troubles of her own, solving this crime and living to tell about it, might prove trickier than mixing up the ultimate banana cream pie. So obviously, like, the banana cream pie is what was found at the at the murder scene. Um, but that's not, like, that important. Um, at least I don't think so yet. Um, I'm a, a little less than halfway through it. This, another thing I really love about, about this book series is that... Um, there are recipes in it so and they actually like they work too so this is one for corn chowder somewhere along the way she quit doing just desserts and um she started adding in like breakfast and lunch and dinner recipes as well um for like soups and like there's one in here for uh cheesy beer muffins that i want to try i've i've tried several of the recipes in this book well a couple We'll say a couple. I've tried a couple of the recipes in this book so far, and they're really good. Um, the oven French toast turned out really well, just gonna say. Uh, so I'm excited to see what other recipes are in here, and i um, excited to find out who murdered um, Victoria. Um, I have an inkling, but sometimes there's a twist, you know? So, really good. I expect to finish this by Friday and possibly post a review on it and what I thought. Um, but I like it a lot so far. Um, I'm reading two nonfiction books right now. So the first one that I'm reading is Cleopatra by Stacey, Stacey Schaff. I'm not sure if I'm saying her last name right. Um, this is a biography. It is dense. Um, I've been reading this for a while and I keep getting distracted and reading other things putting this down. <laughs> I think I've been reading this for years and um, I'm only on page 56 so if that gives you any idea how dense it is uh, yeah but it's not bad it's just so much detail um, and the like it's just a lot of detail and I, I think I started reading this as a teenager so maybe my attention span wasn't that great either. Um, also 
life and busyness and such. Plus, I tend to lean t more towards fiction. So, I'm trying to be better and I'm trying to read more historical fiction and I am going to finish this. I'm going to make myself. Um, because her life really was very interesting and I've been wanting to know, like, all about it. But I haven't finished this. It's been years. Um, so I'm finally going to finish it. I'm going to make myself. Um, another book that is nonfiction, I've actually been enjoying this. Um, is The Girls of Atomic City. So this is obvious, like I said, nonfiction. Um, really, really good. It is about the girls who, um, during World War II were given jobs. They were, they were promised these fantastic, wonderful jobs that would give them so much independence and, um, they would pay really, really well and they were, but, um, the government was like, yes, you'll be paid really, really well, but we can't tell you where, where, we're, where you're going, and we can't really tell you what you'll be doing, um, but it's all covered, and you'll be paid, and it's great, and you'll be independent, and you get to see the world. Well, it turns out the world was Tennessee, um, and Oak Ridge, Tennessee, to be exact, so, um, I'll, I'll just read the back. At the height of World War II, Oak Ridge, Tennessee was home to 75,000 residents, consuming more electricity than New York City. It's impressive. But to most of the world, the town did not exist. Thousands of civilians, many of them young women from small towns across America, were recruited to the secret city enticed by solid wages and the promise of war-ending work. Kept very much in the dark, a Few would ever guess the true nature of the tasks they, for, they performed each day in hulking factories in the middle of the Appalachian Mountains. That is, until the end of the war, when Oak Ridge's secret was revealed. Drawing on the voices of the women who lived, lived it, women who are now in their 80s and 90s, the Girls of Atomic City rescues a, a remarkable forgotten chapter of American history from obscurity. Denise Kiernan captures the spirit of the, of the times through these women, their pluck, their desire to contribute, and their enduring courage. So, like Rosie the Riveter, if you can imagine, like, that's the kind of ladies these were. Um, they were fighting for their country in their own way. Um, and I love that at the, at the very beginning of the book, it has like a list of all of the ladies and their jobs um and like obviously like some of them had husbands and they took their husbands with them too so like they're also in here um like elizabeth graves she was a physicist who worked on the neutron reflector that surrounded the core of the gadget that's what they called it because they weren't allowed to say what it really was Hmm. <laughs> sound like the government um but it's really really good and so a lot of it is like talking about how they grew up why they wanted to leave like a lot of people are like why would you leave like why why would you agree to this well because they wanted to see the world <laughs> and they wanted to be independent in a time when that wasn't very common still um so really good excited to get more into it Oh, it's got pictures, too. It's got pictures of them. Um, so, yes. This is good. If you need um, maybe some inspiration <laughs> to, to work harder, to fight harder. Another one that I'm reading is, uh, this is fiction, and it's called Paris, the novel. It is set from, like, the founding of Paris to the 50s, I think, uh, something like that, up to the 50s, um, I don't know, but up, up to, like, the 40s or 50s, and it starts with this Edward Rutherford, and, um, oh, that's the writer, never mind, um, anyway, uh, it's just, it's really just a story about the city, and it follows, like, a bunch of different people. I mean, this book is, like, probably, 
like 600 pages um but it follows like so many different people um a pair of brothers one of whom works on the Eiffel Tower um talks about Moulin Rouge you know all of that different kind of stuff and so this is just seems like a very summary um novel to me it seems like something you would want to curl up on on the porch with with a cup of tea and, and just enjoy this so hoping that it gets warm enough outside to go do that um that I have some other books to read uh before that so hopefully by the time I get to this one, it'll be warm enough to go sit on my porch with some tea and enjoy this and find out what it's really about. Because clearly, all I know is that it's about Paris. Um, the last book, and you're going to make fun of me for this, is um, We Got a Greyhound. He's a retired racer from Florida. And a part of the adoption group's um, thing to adopt him or any uh, any greyhound from their group is that we have to have retired racing greyhounds for dummies so yes I'm reading this as well um but it's pretty interesting like it talks about like how to train him because he's never seen windows <laughs> they've never seen pools um thankfully like he's seen windows and like we weren't his foster house so she, obviously she lives in a house and he had at that point seen windows and such so she got to see like him being really goofy he's still a goofball um but at this point he's seen windows but it talks about like you know they've never seen windows they've never seen pools so like be careful um it talks about like their historical origins like apparently they um come from the middle east and were used for hunting which makes perfect sense um and uh they are a breed that is very close to their original ancestors. Like, they haven't changed a whole lot, which is really interesting to me, and I want to read more about that. Um, it also talks about, like, how to train them. Like, apparently they're very, very proud, we're finding out. Like, you can't smack them on the nose, or they'll just, you know ignore you for the next two hours <laughs> so when I witnessed this firsthand because he tried to get in the trash and I not too hard but I, I whacked him with a kitchen towel and he acted like I chopped off his legs <laughs> didn't speak to me for an hour um yes this is the dog um yes he was very upset with me but we apologized and it's all fine now he's currently napping in the bedroom um the other bedroom if you can't tell I'm on a bed I'm in the guest room um pretty good not my not my most favorite thing to read obviously because this is far different from the other pile of books but it's okay it's pretty good and uh I'll get to learn more about my new dog so but I tend to to steer more towards fiction um the two nonfiction books are the exception to the rule, and I'm trying to get better about that. I'm trying to add a nonfiction book to each TBR list, at least one, and finish it. <laughs> so, but that is pretty much the conclusion of this video. Um, this is the stack of books, because I don't read one book at a time. <laughs> and is that weird? I don't read one book at a time. I read several. Um, I've always been this way. I think I have a problem. But that's it. So if you like this video, if you like this channel, please hit like and subscribe. And I'll do my best to get better at making YouTube videos. <laughs> so have a nice day. Bye.